In organic chemistry, we often want to turn an alkane into an alcohol. Now, how can we do this? Well, there are basically three different ways that we can do this, but they all have their advantages and their disadvantages. So, let's go over each method separately. So, the first way in which we can turn an alkane into an alcohol is what is known as an acid-catalyzed hydration on an alkane. So, what are the reactants we need for this reaction? Well, we first need to start with an alkene. So, let's say our alkene in this case is 2 methyl propene, which can be drawn like so. And now we also need an acid. So typically we use either sulfuric acid or H3O plus. So let's say we use H3O plus here. And we also need to have water, which basically supplies the OH group in the alcohol. So what can happen between these three molecules? Well, let's first remember the property we had with an alkene in which we had uh, electron density, heavy electron density, both above and below the double bond because of the overlapping p orbitals from the pi bonds. So we can essentially have this double bond act as a base, and it can attack the proton from this acid, the H3O+. So that is the first step in our reaction. Now, just like the reaction with hydrogen halides with alkenes, we have to follow what is known as Markovnikov's rule, which states that we always form the most stable carbocation. So, we have two options in which we can have the proton attack. We can either have it attack the central carbon here, or we can have it attack the top carbon here. So, let's go over each case separately. Let's say first we have the proton fully bond to the carbon in the middle. What would be the intermediate and carbocation that we form? So, it would be this. And we notice that we have a formal charge of plus one on this top carbon because it only has three valence electrons as opposed to four. Now, what about what if we say that we have the proton fully bonded to the top carbon instead of the central carbon? What would be that intermediate? So it would be this. Now let's notice the differences in these two molecules. Here we see that we have what is known as a primary carbocation because the, the formal charge of plus one is on a carbon which is only attached to one other carbon. Well here we have a tertiary carbocation because we have this carbon here which bears the formal charge of plus one bonded to three separate carbon atoms. Therefore we, also, we know that a tertiary carbocation is much more stable than a secondary carbocation, which is in turn much more stable than a primary carbocation. So we know that this carbocation intermediate is much more stable than this one. Therefore, we only form this intermediate in our mechanism. So we have this as our being our intermediate, and we have to have it react further. So what can happen between this intermediate and either an acid or a water? So the next step in this reaction is we have that the carbocation attacks this water here. So the lone pair from the water essentially attacks the positive carbon here, and we form what is known as a hydrated alcohol. So what do we get? And we should notice that this oxygen here bears a formal charge of plus one because it only has five valence electrons, one, two, three, four, five, as opposed to six in a neutral oxygen. So here we have this fairly unstable molecule which has to react further. So how can this molecule here react further to form an alcohol? Well, again, we have water reacting with this molecule. So instead of having the water uh, attack a carbon, we instead have the water act as a base, ripping off the extra proton or the H from the protonated alcohol. So the last step in this reaction is we have water, H2O, act as a base, the lone pair attacks this proton here, and the electrons used in bonding between the O and the H go completely towards the O. So the final product we get in this reaction is the alcohol that we wanted originally.
and we notice that there are no formal charges anywhere. Now what is the problem with this reaction? Well, one common problem we have with this is there might be a rearrangement happening right in the middle of a reaction, changing the alcohol that we form as a product. So how can I give an example of this? Well, let's say instead of having our alkene being uh, one methyl propene, let's instead have it be 3,3-dimethyl-1-butene. So let's first draw that alkene. And again, the other two reactants we need in this reaction is an acid. So let's say instead of let's instead of having H3O plus, let's have sulfuric acid. And again, we need water to provide the OH group. Now again, let's go through the same mechanism we had before, in which we have the double bond or the uh, the pi bond act as a base, taking a proton from this acid. And you'll see that. In order to form the more stable cation, we more stable carbocation, we have the proton fully bond this carbon on the right. So the intermediate we would form in this reaction would be this. And then we have a formal charge of plus one on this carbon here. Now this is where we encounter a problem. Instead of having the water basically attack this carbon here, we instead have rearrangement happening, which, which means that we have the methyl group here essentially shift over and attack the positive carbon here, forming a more stable tertiary carbocation. So the next step in this reaction would be this. And then we have a formal charge of plus one on this carbon here. Now why does this do this? It's simply because we form a more stable molecule. Here you'll see that we have a secondary carbocation because the formal charge of plus one is on a carbon which is attached to two other carbons. While here we see that we have a tertiary carbocation because the positive carbon is attached to three other carbons, making it more stable. Therefore, we don't get, because of this re rearrangement, we don't get the alcohol we wanted originally. So how can we prevent rearrangement in our formation of an alcohol? Well, instead of using water and an acid, we have to instead use something known as oxymercuration, demercuration to turn our alkene into an alcohol.